Welcome to debugging. Um, my name is Kurt Hartung. I'm glad you were able to come. Um, I'm actually a little bit uh, reticent. I've never given this talk before. I've always wanted to give a talk like this, and I finally sort of put one together. So I want to start out with something uh, that you probably are not expecting, and that's this. You think about this equation wrong, very likely. You think energy and mass can be transferred between each other. That's not what that from, that's not what that means. It actually is uh, this. Mass is a measure of energy. They're the same thing all the time. And if you know about uh, relativity and stuff, and, and you watch a lot of videos on YouTube like I do, you'd be aware that you can take two completely same things, and uh, they're both can be measured both in their mass and their energy and blah, blah, blah. The reason I showed you that is so that I could show you this. Programming is debugging. They're not different. It's the same thing. You're going to spend 80% of your time debugging whether you like it or not, what you're doing when you program something. You don't program something and it hits play or hit go and it just works, right? No. It, it, you have to go back and fix it and change it, debug it. And by debugging, I don't mean take the bugs out. I mean make it do what you meant it to do the first time, right? Um, so, for the Einstein, he did say one thing about the most applicable ever for debugging, and I bet, you, I bet most of you are already thinking of it, that's this. Right. Turns out, I did some research on this. He really did say this. Uh, he said it a lot. No one knows who else to attribute it to, so it's attributed to Einstein. But the sentiment is very, very accurate. That's the good news, is that I have that to show you. The bad news is that he's wrong. If you're going to be debugging, you're going to do it. You're going to delete white space. You're going to recompile. You're going to do a clean build. You're going to do all these things. And the reason you're going to do it is because it works. <laughs> because sometimes you're not doing what you think you're doing. The project is out of date, the compiler is a little bit confused, the interpreter doesn't know exactly what files you changed, or you're working, this will happen to me a lot, I'll be working on a remote file system, and the date on the DNS server is wrong. It's off by like five seconds. So I'll save a file, and then I'll compile right away, and it doesn't realize the file's changed, because the NFS, uh, sorry, I said the NFS, the NFS server, because the NFS server has the wrong time, so it's supposed to date stamps in the future. And sometimes they warn you about that, and sometimes they don't. So it sounds like at least one of you knows what I'm talking about. So for one of you, this is totally awesome. You're getting it. <laughs> okay, here's something I want to show you, though. The way you beat that. Put in an error. Just type, I'm wrong. Hit compile. Watch it choke. Because sometimes it doesn't. And you realize, you're not compiling what you thought you were. <laughs> you're not editing the file you thought you were editing. You're editing the backup that you created yesterday. Or you're creating a file that the compiler isn't even looking at. So that's one tip that I wanted to make sure I gave you. Was... Uh, just sometimes shake the tree. Put in something you know is wrong. Is this, is, am I like going too, uh, everyone's okay? Okay, I'm, I'm getting a lot of blank stares. I mean, <laughs> you might, but that, but, for a program, I think it was our, correct. I understand the And, you. Okay. Should I start with a joke? Sure. Like, like, I would, I would have been here sooner, but, uh, my, my laptop runs on Linux, I got a virus. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, I had to compile it first, right? Which was a pain because I didn't have the latest version of libvirus, right? I'm kidding. I, I did have the latest version. <laughs> okay, see? Mm -hmm. Let me back up a little bit. Um, defensive coding techniques. We've all seen them, we all know them. Um, they come under the heading, don't be stupid, right? But let's be a little more specific about that. Fixing bugs before they put in. Here are some actual suggestions. One thing I didn't want to do up here is stand up and say a bunch of stuff everybody already knows. You know, don't put bugs in. Duh. How do you not do that? Well, for example, don't comment in code. It doesn't exist. Stop telling people it exists. Stop teaching it. Stop. No. What you do have is descriptive variable names. That's the real thing. I am saying descriptive, not verbose. Okay. Verbose means long for no reason. Does anyone not know what I is? I is fine. Use I. I work at studios, but they'll say things like you must use the word iterator or step something else, and that just you know makes you want to pick up the guns and start shooting people because no. I still don't know the variable name. How do you use variable names? I don't tell them. I'll use I, J, and K in other loops. And, <laughs> and you know what? That's fine. Because it's obvious what you're doing, all right? That's okay. Don't ever do this. I will kill you. I described exactly what it is in a comment somewhere above where I'm using it, all right? I hear laughter. Someone's seen this before. 
looks like a good idea. You'll see this in mathematical simulations all the time. They're crazy. Better. Just call it what it is. Notice no comment. This is what it is. This is, this is what people mean when they mean self comments and jokes. It's about as close as you're going to get. It's crystal clear. This might be better. This might be a disaster. Because this part's correct. It's a full vector. This part was correct when you wrote it. <laughs> Maybe not anymore, but you've got a nice, friendly uh, editor that doesn't care because it just copies and pastes everything. So you might look at this and think you know what it is, and it's not this anymore. Things or morph all the time. Or it's redundant. Or it's redundant. That's the other reason it might be bad. And if it's obvious, leave it obvious. Um, never use new. Okay, this is a tip you're not going to see a lot of places. This is something I tell people when I'm mentoring you. Stop doing this. You're, you're programming something like a drone control program, and you've made it better. So what do you call it? The new drone control program. <laughs> Don't, and here is why. New always means new even when it's old. Someone's gonna come and look at your code and say, well, this is the original and this is the new one. I've seen code bases, I'm not kidding, where the new one's the old one. Because the old one got deleted when they created the new one and then someone came along and rewrote it and took the new away. So the actual new becomes incredibly confusing. How do I my final document? <sighs> it's not final. Don't get me started on Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please don't do that. And again, I'm trying to keep things. I don't know if I can fill an hour, by the way. They gave me an hour and I'm like, I don't know. So if I, I bore very easily. I don't know if you can tell that or not. So if I don't, I'll throw it open to question and answer and tell you how stupid I am. Refactoring a variable. If you refactor something, change its name. Even if it's still a good descriptive name. Forward vector. Change it to, you know, forward pointing vector or something. The reason you do that, why do you do that? Anyone ever know what I'm talking about? Why you do that? So the compiler forces you to go everywhere it is. It forces you to go to those two places you forgot. And the one your coworker put in you don't know about. It forces you to visit every place you use the variable so you can make sure it's still being used correctly. Yes? So should I not be right clicking and refactoring and replace it all in the middle? No. Speaking of, speaking of features that destroy good coding practices, anyone ever use Microsoft Source Space? No. It's an old source control program. It had the ability to take two uh, take a single file and mirror it to two locations on a, in a directory tree. So you would work on a file here, check it in, and everyone else would get it in both places. Hey, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. <laughs> Usually it didn't. That, that, we actually used that on, on EverQuest. We used Microsoft Source Space. We were, in, we were on there when we trans trans uh, transitioned to uh, first one. And that's where we discovered a lot of those problems. Comments. Um, I encountered this in an embedded compiler called Nuka, New COS, a while ago, where the uh, creator of it said, um, do this, and I've liked it. Um, comment on the same line. If it doesn't fit where you think it, it's probably too long. The reason you do that is so you can read the code or the comments, and they don't get in each other's way. You can read what I'm doing exactly precisely, or I can read what I think I'm doing. Also, it's uh, very easier. It's much easier to um, maintain this because you end up changing a single line with change the comment to have habitually. But if there's a block comment up here, you're in a, you're an echo anywhere near it. You're going to program. You're going to do this, and you're going to forget this is this. And this may now be out of date. That's why people hate block comments. The people who hate block comments, that's one of the reasons they hate them. The people who love them love them for different reasons. I'm not here to say they're bad. Um, they're kind of like a go-to. It's really kind of what you do with them, not what they are. In general, I don't like block comments because I maintain older code bases. Not all the time, but when you do it for as long as someone like me does, you encounter old code bases and the block comments, you learn to ignore them. They're worse than useless because when they're right, great. But when they're not, it's not obvious, and you'll waste time believing them. So, sounds like I have at least one other person. <laughs> all right. Well, I prefer, as I said, yeah. nice. Yeah, does anyone not know what's happening here and need to comment? <laughs> yeah, I, I habitually write the commenting code. Um, the time you say will be your own. Anyone been programming long enough to run into this? You look back at something you wrote and go, what was this idiot? Oh, that was me. <laughs> what was I thinking? Now you have to figure it out because you wrote it poorly. Sprinkle comment. And I use the word sprinkle because I really don't like them either. When, when it's not obvious, you see, when I see a comment, what I immediately think as both a programmer and a maintainer is, there's something not obvious about what I just read. I can't wait to find out what it is. There's something not obvious. There's something that the programmer wants me to know about this code that I can't tell by looking. And that should almost never be the case. 
That's why comments are sprinkled where they really matter. Use them sparingly. Don't be clever. <laughs> Don't be clever. Okay. Right, clear, simple code. I want the code to be understandable by my 10-year-old. And there's a good reason for that. I'm not just being pedant. I'm saying you make fewer errors when you do that. You do, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute, because I'm talking out of order. Don't rely on implicit precedent. Don't say, hey, C++ has this very well defined, and everyone obviously knows that I'm not going to put any parentheses in. Yeah. C equals A, logical lambda B. Result, point is good, right? Uh, people generally know what this kind of trying to do. Are you sure you know what this is going to do? Yeah. Well, it's called a, 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 a trinary. It's a trinary. But is it this? Or is it this? Yeah. You are correct, sir. It is the first one. And this, you know, this isn't meant to be a trick question. The point is, how long did you just spend thinking about it? Right, okay. You know how long I spent thinking about this? Zero. You know how long I spent thinking about this? Zero. So, so this is all in the judgment box. You know, and I have the argument, are, are you writing for, are you writing for the other person? Are you writing for a third grader, a high school person, or a PhD? You're definitely not writing for the PhD, and it's going to no. support that. Yeah. But, there's some techniques people argue and go, they'll argue this to death, they'll do a religious war. Yeah. Right, and this oh. removes the war. Because both of these usages are plausible. I've used this both ways. Uh -huh. All right, so it's not a silly construct. It's just not a good idea to leave it to knowledge of what the precedence is. And the reason for that is because at 2 in the morning when you've got a latte drip on, okay, and you're trying to figure some piece of code out because the, because the deadline is in 20 minutes. You don't want to sit here and think, what did I mean? You want to look at this and say, I know exactly what I meant. Is it right? That's what you care. Well, somebody else could argue that, that they would replace that. They would type it in the death and go, if A and B, C equals 1, else C equals 2. Oh, they sure. They would write it that way because they refuse to use this because they'll argue that that's you know, one of the special things in the land. And, you know, and, and it's tougher and tougher because you want to use MC, for instance, nowadays. You don't want to be handcuffed. Everyone's just right. lambda happy. What? Everyone's lambda happy. Right. I mean, <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Okay. So the moral is, and, and I'm not arguing the plus right. or minus for that. He's right. Okay. But that's not my point. My point is that I write code like this, and you look at this and think, duh, that's obvious. You didn't need the parentheses back. Good. Good. You could tell. <laughs> okay. I want you to. I want it to be obvious, so that you don't spend any time, zero time, I know of, thinking what I meant. You know what I meant. Okay. You, I want you thinking about, is that right? Is what I meant correct? Is there a bug here? That's, that's the point. So, uh, spend time thinking about your logic being correct, not what was intended. Don't be clever. You are impressing nobody. <laughs> nobody but yourself. There are exactly two reasons your code will ever be revisited. Two. I'm telling you right here. Two. Because it's someone fixing it or someone's extending it. That's it. Sometimes, a rare, diminishing the rare third, you're being evaluated by your boss. Okay? And you know what he's going to pr pr prefer? He's going to prefer what I just showed you. He's not going to want clever. Okay? These are the two reasons. And in both of those cases, in both of those cases, you are going to hate the person who wrote it cleverly, who wrote it, in, who wrote it with those weird constructs and those really cool things that you're doing, with a lambda that's 16 miles long. Okay? You're going to hate that. You want to understand it quickly so you can fix it quickly. Because okay? we're talking about Ultimately, what are we talking about here? Hobby? I mean, I do program as a hobby, but I'm a professional. And I think that most of the people here either want to be or are professionals. And the idea is to use your time as efficiently as possible so you can go do what you want to do at home. And you don't be sitting at the office fixing these things, and this is how you do it. You write super simple, stupid code. Source code is not fast code. I ran into this in a, uh, in a, uh, a effective C++ or something written by the Microsoft guy. And it really focused, this was years ago, it really focused something in my mind. People write code that is very short, and they take away the white space, and they think, I think in their heads that it runs faster when you do that. I don't, I hope no one here thinks that. If you do, it doesn't. <laughs> it's compiled. Um, we used to have 80 by, four, uh, 80 by 24 displays, spaces at a premium. You smash code together because you could see more on the screen at once, and you had to. And this space was at a premium. 
you know, you program you program on a, on a floppy drive that has 540 kilobytes on it, right? You couldn't just store an essay next to your code, so you couldn't. Now you can. Please do. We would have been if we could have. We couldn't have. Separate blocks of logic with line of white space. I want to do this, okay? Then I'm going to do this, and you say, don't smash everything together. This gives a hint to what your thought process was when you wrote it, okay? Yep. They're wrong. They're wrong, and they should stop teaching it. But please continue. Um, they really put them like not having um, business end of code. Do you know why? What do you mean by end of code? End of code. Don't know about but, that. Like, if, like after the. Um, you mean like if I had white space here? Yeah. yeah. I don't care. <laughs> sometimes different. Sometimes when you do code merges, different uh, diffs will call white space different things if they see it on the same line as a substantive line, maybe. Yeah. Terse is, uh, you know what I mean, terse, it's easy. Uh, opposite of verbose, very, very, uh, say a lot with a short word. Okay, what you'll, what you'll see a lot is if blah, 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 and then an open parenthesis. All right, and then some code, and then a close here. That's not terrible, but what you will sometimes see is um, immediately following that more lines of code, immediately following more lines of code, and you'll have white space, for example, let me go back a little bit, you'll see no white space in there, all right? That's not wrong, and if you're used to seeing it, it's okay, it's a muscle. I like putting in you know, one white space, no white space, one, one, two, three. I do this on purpose, okay? The preference, um, whatever, it, it, frankly, it does come down to what you're used to, I'll admit that, but you, I would like for you to be used to, I'm not teaching a class here, but if I were, I would like you to be used to more white space, not less. Which happens all the time in a class. Yeah. So not just something you do. Bugs can cancel each other. Sure. You test constantly as you write a function. Don't write the function and test the function. I mean, if it's a short function, sure. But most times, write a piece of the function, test it. Piece, test, piece, test. Because it is possible for you to put a bug at the beginning and a bug at the end and have them both cancel each other so that it looks like it's working. And it's not. And you'll discover it later when you test. Um, I will often have a separate system if I'm writing something very complex, especially if it takes a while to compile or to run because it's got all kinds of hard assets in order to load. I'll have a separate project just for writing functions. Sorry, listen, I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> I'm talking to everybody. Um, uh, just so that I can test things quickly because one thing you won't do is you won't test if it takes you five minutes after you hit F5. I won't do that either. But you want it to be so easy to test that you continuously do it. Okay? Um, yeah, if you write too much for testing, I have had this happen. I have actually had this happen. I've seen it happen. It's a thing. Make sure you test continuously, uh, function by function, not necessarily line by line, but you know what I mean. You write a little block of code supposed to do something, test it. It will save you time later. It doesn't feel like it will, but it will. Yeah. So should we break code even up any further? I mean, he's actually talking about um, almost like microcoding. Now, like if we have a function and that's the function, should we break that up into little sub-functions? Depends. Um, if you're writing like a collision function, to, or let's say I'm writing a function to reflect a, a uh, to, to reflect a uh, uh, a bullet off of a wall. I need to look at the input conditions. I need to calculate a normal. I need to look at the output. I'm going to test each one of those. And I'm going to try to test them in isolation. And it's going to end up one function, you know, reflect projectile. But I am going to test each little piece to make sure I've got them all right. Yeah. I'll do something like, so for instance, if I've got a group of things that I want to do something to, um, if instead of grabbing them all and doing it, I might grab them all, turn out that I got the right one, right. then write the second half to that I'm then doing the thing I want to. Right? Actually, that, that so my thing was different than that's coming up later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so I've got lots more. I could go on with pet peeve after pet peeve and things, but that's not why you're here. So 
resources here for finding out specific debugging things, right? You're not, you're not here to hear some programmer rant about being old and frantic. So here's what I'm not going to talk about. I am not going to talk about bracketing. That's where you say, well, my bug's somewhere here. Is it here? Come here. It's here. Come here. I'm not going to talk about types of bugs or communication techniques. Well, I am going to talk about logging, so I probably shouldn't put that in there. Using debuggers. I've actually seen this tip. Use a debugger. <laughs> really? God, I've just been kicking them. Okay, this is a scientific <laughs> method. Okay, and the reason I'm not going to talk about any of this is because it's very well discussed online. You type in, help me debugging, you will see lecture after lecture, and they're good, and there's stuff you should see, and I kind of assume you know. You're here for things that you can't find online, right? How many books are around? Et cetera. So, basically anything well covered in class. Debugging is observing. You probably all know that, but I want to emphasize this. Because observe everything, not just the output. Observe that screen flicker. Observe these two pixels that came on. Observe how long the program took to load. That seems longer. Hmm, why is that? Well, I'm running on an SSD. I'm running on an SSD now. Maybe that's it. Maybe not. Maybe there's an audio asset that it had to time out on. You have to notice everything. There's no, I can't get more specific than this. All I can say is the more you do it, the stronger you'll get, the more muscle you see, the more you learn to pay attention to stuff and observe everything. And that's why sometimes you'll go to a QA person and they'll say, I see this bug and I have no idea what's wrong. And you go over to the terminal and go, oh, well, I know the problem. How do you do that? Because you notice something they didn't. All right, and that's common. Yeah, that, well, yeah, that, that, or I, I call it feel. Yeah, yeah. All right, now that feels like memory corruption, but it doesn't look like, yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> that, that feels like a race. I, yeah. I, hate, I hate that feel. Um, and again, you'll learn to say, that's weird. That feels wrong. That smells wrong. Something's wrong here. And it'll lead you, it'll generally lead you in the right direction. It won't get you there, but it'll start you off in the right direction. So, I'm going to give you concrete tips, things you can actually look at. And I started writing these down. I ended up with, I think, around eight or ten of them. What doesn't it do? It's my biggest tip. This is what you should always be asking yourself. I used this question when I was in IT 28 years ago. A secretary would come to me and say, it's broken. Great. What doesn't it do to focus system? <coughs> now, if the answer is it doesn't turn on, OK, it's broken. But it generally, it was never that. It was always, oh, my, my disk doesn't freeze. It, or my keyboard doesn't work. Or my mouse stops working. Great. What doesn't it do? And what's important about this question is not that you aren't familiar with it or it's just you're hearing it for the first time. Asking this exact question will keep you going when you've lost all hope. You think, I've checked everything. No, you haven't, or it would work. I say the same thing to my kids. I looked everywhere. No, you haven't, or you'd have it. <laughs> I've tried everything. I've looked everywhere. No, you haven't. What doesn't it do? If you have looked everywhere, then there's no bug. Right? So this will keep you going. Number two, um, logging functionality. It's one of the first things I put up together for any program, any new project, you have to be able to log. It has to be lightweight. It has to be so lightweight that you don't mind using it everywhere. Logging to a file is great. Um, and I'm going to tell you something that you're probably going to wildly disagree with me, and that's that most logging levels are pointless. You basically have two logging levels. I'm debugging, I'm shipping. <laughs> that's it. And the reason for that is because um, well, I'll actually get to it a bit later. The reason for that is you either care or you don't, and you almost always, it's one or the other. You don't have, I, I know there's lots of worn and critical and edge, forget all of that. You either care or you don't, and you do. Include information in the log, don't be lazy. Don't say, uh, file didn't load. For God's sake, tell me the name. Yeah. That, that might actually be the bug. I couldn't load file named Dugan Bloody. <laughs> well, there's the bug. I couldn't, I couldn't load this file named Corrupt List of Strength. Okay, that is often the whole bug right there. Include the name. Don't re reproduce a log verbatim. You'll make this mistake one time. You'll never make it again because you get a log message that says, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that says this failed to load," and you look in the code and that's in five places exactly. Hmm. <laughs> Seems obvious, but you'll do it when you're lazy. Here's how I get around that. I don't. I'm lazy, same as everyone else. I'll do this. Yep. Just do that. Just make it different somehow. Put a little two there. Why, why three, four, you four, the break what? Why you just not uh, to call my attention. Call my attention. Yeah, that's fine. This, this is the brackets are unnecessary. This is not really specific. Okay. Sometimes this is the log. 
<laughs> when I want to get my message, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right through the logs. Um, when I'm logging a specific system, so I know I know where I'm going to see this. Yeah, it's, you'll get, the point is, as long as you're doing something like that, you're, you're doing what I think you should do, which is to have lots of logging, so that when something goes wrong, you have a post-mortem to speak of. So you don't just have a crash, or a crash dump. Um, and that way, with good logging, retro steps are often unnecessary. Believe it or not, you say, give me the logs, and there's the bug. You don't need to reproduce it. You know exactly what's wrong. The logs have told you. It really is sometimes that simple. Not always, but... Um, when I'm debug, when I'm creating a new function, I create a ridiculous amount of logging. I just added one to something. I just multiplied it by two. I just did this. I just did this. And I followed logging. And in C++, I'll do a, um, I usually make them conditionally compiled. So that when I'm done with a function, I'll turn off a flag and they all just get removed. Zero. I, other languages have similar things. Make sure disabled means disabled. Don't just say turn off the log levels. Another reason I hate them. Because oftentimes, it will, it will parse the log, it will go and search all the information the log wants to log out, and it'll create this wonderful string and then dump it. And I actually just, <laughs> I wish I could be specific. If you know where I work and what I'm doing, you can figure it out. We are evaluating a project where they said, they asked me to figure out what the hardware would be required for the service. I said, no problem, ran it. Found out that 70 milliseconds of each frame, the, the service ran at two frames per second. 70 milliseconds of each of those frames was spent constructing logs and throwing them out. <laughs> 70 milliseconds. Uh, you should be horrified by that. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was in a blueprint. It was like, <laughs> okay. Because for them, disabling logs meant actually just not sending them. Don't do that. Uh, number three, don't just take it back with no repro. Okay. Talk to the person that sent it. The reason is it's going to save your own chips. Again, we're talking, we're professionals, right? The idea is to save time. Not saying we're professionals are awesome. I mean, we are, but also to save time. And that is, if you kick it back, it's going to take them. They have to work into their schedule to redo it, find out what's wrong with you, spend some time saying, oh, that damn programmer can't figure things out, and then send it to you again. Just go talk to them. But non-confrontationally, you don't want to be a why or what, or it doesn't work. Or the repo says don't. They need to be working for me. Perhaps you could explain to me. No, I'm an idiot. Can you show me? No. They generally will. The QA, I guarantee the QA is better at running the game than you are. Guarantee it. And it will show you commands you didn't realize, they'll show you something they didn't tell you. Oftentimes, and probably about 50% of the time, there's a step they didn't put in the repro step that they edit it out because they do it so often. That's usually what it is. And this, this short circuits that. Be diplomatic. It comes around. Be careful disparaging the trained squirrel who wrote the mess you're debugging. You might be talking to them. <laughs> okay. um, we all write terrible code. We all do terrible things. Not all the time, but we do. Be nice, especially if it's the person who just left the company. Very common. Oh, they just left the company. Well, they just left the company probably because you know, sometimes they were incompetent. They wrote some bad systems. We all know they're bad. Don't go around saying how terrible that code was, how you're slogging through, how you're rewriting everything, refactoring. You sound like a whiny idiot. Just be diplomatic. Concrete tip number four. Concrete tip number five, rubber ducking. Does anyone not know what this is? It's practically a meme. Okay. Here's what I want to tell you about this. Rubber ducking, for those who don't know, is explaining your problem to something that has absolutely zero understanding of it. What this forces you to do is think about it in a different way. It makes your brain work differently. And this is important because people short circuit rubber ducking and don't do it right. You can't just look at the code and think, ah, how would I explain this to a rubber duck? You have to do it. <laughs> your brain has to actually move. That doesn't mean you have to get a rubber duck. It means you have to get something. Get a coworker. Get somebody. Have them, ideally someone who's got some expertise in your system. Because then you say something like this. Follow this with me. Tell me what you think is wrong. They're going to sit there quietly. I guarantee. Because they're not going to, you're, you're explaining the system. You've just got your brain and you just pulled them off of a bagel. They're not going to have an idea what you're talking about. I'll tell you how many times I have done this. See, I do this and I use your system this way. Oh, oh that's wrong. It's, it's like the sun coming up. I, I can't explain it to you unless you've done it. You know, but it works. But you've got to do it. You can't just sit there and say, oh, how would I explain this? You're doing the same thing you've been doing. And it's not working. You have to actually put your brain into different places. It's a human physiology thing, and that's why rubber ducking works. Okay? Can I move on? 
trying to teach it from the kick. Very zen. Outputs and inputs are the same. Bet you never heard that before. Well, they are. What's an output but inputs are something else? What's an input but something else someone else put? Why am I saying that? Because it means all you really have to log intensely are the inputs. The easy thing is the function. I just entered a function. Here's everything I saw. Here's what I'm going to do with it. You put that in all your functions, bugs will just come out of the woodwork. They'll, they'll appear. Because every function that says that, the one right before it, you'll see where the, dis where you see where the disconnect was. Data good, data good, data good, data bad. Bug must be here. You'd be amazed how well this works. And the reason this works so well is because outputs are all over the place. Oh, sure, ideally they're usually at the bottom of a function, but not always. And sometimes things happen in the middle. And it's difficult to find all those locations and put in all those log messages. Like I said, I'm lazy too. Just put them at the beginning. Everybody's input was somebody else's output, and the bugs will appear. Wow, right? Or duh. Okay. I was proud of myself for thinking this. I've never seen anywhere else. These are all unique, by the way. I haven't seen them except for rubber ducking. And, yeah, um, again, inject some known good input and see where it sucks mud. Because it will. And I actually mean this in literal sense. I used to program in mud. They do mud. Um, this is very common because this will do, again, as I said, you'll find the, where the disconnect was. So just break the disconnect and throw some good input and see what happens. Or just before. This is actually pretty obvious. I probably shouldn't have put this bullet point in. I want to keep it next to the course. You're right. Take a shower. Not because you're dirty. I am not kidding. I am seriously not kidding. I don't mean take a break. I don't mean get up and get some coffee. I don't mean get up and get a bagel. I don't mean go take a walk. I, I don't. And roll it. Um, I seriously mean do something automatic, comfortable, that disengages your brain. Okay, you've got to do that. Cat videos, grab lunch, skeet shooting, all three simultaneously. Okay? <laughs> Get your mind occupied doing something comfortable, different, and familiar. Those are the three words for this slide, okay? And the reason for that is because you've got to get your brain off the problem. Your brain is stuck in the wrong place. It, it just is. It's stuck in the wrong place. And the knowledge of that doesn't help you. The only way to get it unstuck, like ever, you know uh, the expression, I've got his name on the tip of my tongue? Right? You, you, you know it that you know it, you can't think of it? That's because your brain, and this is actually, I saw this on Brain Games, awesome show. Your brain thinks it knows, and it's got like four or five good candidates, and they're all wrong, but it's trying to figure out which one of those it is. And the real answer is over here, and you'll never see it. Okay? The only way to see it, get rid of this, so it can bubble up, and that's what this is. You will be taking a shower, Driving on your way to work, that's fine. I did one. Way to work, way from work. Uh, you, you won't get the answer, but you'll get an approach. Like, oh, I didn't try this. Oh, I wonder what that variable's doing. Of course, that's going to tell the story. Get home, do it. I'm telling you this works. Um, kind of looking for some uh, some people to nod and say, yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, no, man. I, I have literally. Okay, good. You're having problems while taking a shower. <laughs> I, I tell this to non-programmers, and they think, yeah, you mean it figuratively because programmers can't say no. <laughs> no, maybe they do, but no, literally, go do something like this. Okay, everyone hates race conditions, right? Those are the hardest bugs to find. It is almost never a race condition. Don't worry. It's almost always order of operations. Right? You think it's a race condition? Put in a five-second delay. Just delay the heck out of it. I'm going to set my frame rate to one and watch the bug still be there. Or not, maybe it is a race. But usually it's not, usually the bug's still there. But don't worry, it's order of operation. You just don't understand how the program works. Okay. Got it? Yeah, I'm not quite sure I understand. So it depends on what you're working on. Okay. If you truly are having scribes and other things, so my pet peeve, I'm gonna give you a pet peeve. Sure, good. A lot of people go in and you plenty of condition. Let's say something happens while By adding a delay? Time. That's a pet No, no, they think they figured it out, and they put, all they do is bump it up a level. So something that used to occur one out of a hundred times now occurs one out of ten thousand times, and they've made it harder for you to solve because they almost solved the race. Well, because they didn't solve it. They Correct. just kept shaking the tree so it went away. Cor Correct. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I do that too. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. All right. And a corollary, to, a corollary to this is if it is a race condition, make sure you understand it. 
so that you actually fix it. You don't make it better, you fix it. Because if you make it better, you make it well. I mean, it's hard to see this as a non-game developer, and I know most people probably it's easier R or want to be. When you deploy a bug that happens one in 10,000, that means 500 of your customers are crashing a day, just statistically, if you have a real product, right? That's happening all the time. I had someone uh, just get, oh man, Friday, Friday, decided to generate the random, um, random number generator for a uh, for an asset name. They just used the name from <laughs> one to 9,000. They did it every run, and it had to name two assets. And I went to that person's desk and I said, Mike, who's an LD? <laughs> I shouldn't have named him. I said, Mike, what are the odds that two names are going to be the same? It was like one in 9,000. I'm like, right, how many copies of this game do you think we're gonna sell? That means <laughs> that one customer in 9,000 is going to crash because you did that. Yeah. It's like, oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> and he was lazy. <laughs> Not in general, just that time. And we all do it. We all do it. He was a good friend of mine, and that wasn't his real name. <laughs> <'Cause I'm not laughs> um, final concrete tip, pick a silly guess. Ridiculous guess. Not fairies. Okay. Something you can test. But make a silly guess. And the reason for doing this is to get your brain thinking about it differently. You've already been thinking about it one way. That's not working, or you wouldn't be here. Make a silly guess. If you think that, if your let's say your ship is, uh, you've got a game where a ship just keeps uh, you know, crashing the game every time it fires its guns. Check to see what happens when it fires its missiles. Check to see what happens when it goes the other way. Check to see what happens when the aliens do it. You know, something completely wrong, because it gets your mind thinking in different directions. You're probably not gonna solve your bug doing that, okay? That's not the point. The point is that you're going to see things differently and find out the approach that will find you the problem. And that's what this is all about. That's what debugging is really all about, is finding the right approach, finding the right vector, getting you there, starting there and getting there. Really, I'm done already? Okay. So, so why did you avoid things like this before? See, you, you are a book. I, I love this. But Great. I would have liked, awesome. liked to see you, for instance, do your little take on uh, what we call a scientific method, things like returning your first principles, verifying your assumptions, that stuff. It seems like you would have some interesting takes on that. I think I do, um, but I'll be honest, I, I constructed this talk over the past uh, week. I've been brainstorming into a text file. Oh, I want to talk about this. Oh, yeah, this or that. And as I said, I don't want to talk about things that you can get good answers from elsewhere. So I wanted to make sure this talk was about things that I could bring to the debugging, that I could say, hey, you haven't heard this anywhere else except for me, and not my take on other things. I'd be happy to do that, <laughs> but I didn't know what the scope of this talk would be. I didn't know how long it would be, and I'll just go an hour, 40 minutes, just kind of given it. So I don't have a great answer for you. I mean, but I am fantastic, so I'd love to give you some of my thoughts. <laughs> um, but I don't have any of them prepared. Perhaps another talk. You know, That's you all. Let's just, because you, you would think that came close to that. And when I'm really stuck in the shallows, and I've tried all that, I constantly do things like what I call the first principle. Yep. What do you really know? Can you verify it? Can you, can you use tricks to, to get to it, but then you didn't mention that that's what you're sort of That's doing. what you're kind of doing. You're trying to verify your assumptions. You have to get out of your monkey brain sometimes. It's not here, stop looking. Right. <laughs> I know I want it to be here. It's, it's the joke of the guy who's in the parking lot looking for his keys. Yes. And he's looking underneath the, uh, yeah. underneath the lights. He says, why are you looking underneath the lights? Because if it's not here, I can't find it. Right? You're looking where you want it to be, whether you know it or not. That's why you can't debug your own, I'm sorry, that's why you can't QA your own code. It's because you won't check the stuff you know not to. Your brain knows not to do that. QA tests will say, I went to this corner and the game crashed. Say, oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I hear myself saying that. I hear those words come out of my mouth, and I stop them now, but it's exactly the problem, is you need to use the scientific method because it's impartial, because it's right, because your belief is irrelevant, because if once you've proven that the problem started here, you can stop looking there, but we do it anyway. And I know when I break it down that way, you think, no, I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, and that's why we have things in this country. I got one more question here. So sure. how do you derail your, your own bad habits? And I'll give you an example. Like, um, sometimes it takes a few, over time, I kick myself when I take 15 minutes for something and I go, oh man, I should, why, did, why did that take 15? I should have, I've seen this, I've known this, mm -hmm. you know, 
Why did I let myself keep going down that path? Why didn't I give it to you? Um, okay. I'd love to think about that for a while and get back to you, but my knee-jerk response is overconfidence. I'll be honest with you, I think I'm amazing. <laughs> and I'll be coding and think, ah, I know better than this, but I can do it. I know what I'm doing. I know not to make the common mistake that this leads to, and then I make it. Not always, but sometimes. And that would be my first reaction to that. But I'd love to sit down and think about that more. The one that gets me is it's almost always the last thing you do. I have a friend who always looks one more place so he doesn't say that. <laughs> but, but I'll spend but, yeah. time and go, oh, wait, oh, what, it was the last thing I ever done. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. I look at everything else, I think, you think food, you think yours, you think you see a weird bug that you've never seen before. Right. And sure enough, oh, shit, it was the last thing I did, which it almost always is. And it's so why didn't I look there first? Because you, you yeah. forgot you did two things instead of one, so you missed that thing. There's so many things. Sure. Right? So, yeah, I mean, there's, I could, like I said, I could go on and on and on, and, and I imagine myself sitting out there glazing over. So I was trying to keep things, you know, interesting. What's your worst bug? Okay, I got two of them. Yeah. First worst bug ever was in Eve Online. I worked there for two years. Okay, um, I put in a bug. Actually, I will attempt. Okay, and what I'm going to attempt to do is. No, I'm not going to do a live demonstration. <laughs> um, I actually. Uh, noted this in my original in my original notes. Um, what? No, my son. He's a he used this computer before I did. Uh, yeah, let's, let's let's not show that ever. Okay. Okay. Uh, there it is. You can't see that, can you? Okay. Uh, I do this so rarely. Um, view options, where is it? It's not, it's font. It's called font somewhere. Options. Okay. Let's try the dumb way. Settings, or is it cut? Or is it what is it called now? Personalize. I have a personal resolution. Yeah. Play settings. Screen and layout. Here we are. All, uh, okay, so I, I'll, I'll talk while I'm doing this. So I was on Eve, and I was working on a new project, and I had to uh, replace the uh, parentheses. Can you see that better? Yeah. Okay, so here's my notes. Let's see. See all the stuff I talked about here? Okay, see this function? See this structure? Yeah. What do you got in here? N32 value, N32 pointer, P value. Yeah. I did this. And then I put a value into value, and then I did this. I said value equals some important dynamic pointer, and later on deleted this, but I put it into the wrong thing. Yeah. Okay, here's the insidious part about this bug. This crashed all of Eve for two weeks, <laughs> randomly. Had nothing to do with load. Had nothing to do with the number of people in the scene. Had nothing to do with anything. It had to do with whether or not this pointer happened to have a bit in uh, a bit set in bit 33 because it's a 64-bit machine. 32-bit pointers work just fine. As soon as you add a 33-bit pointer, boom. As long as it was one. This took me several weeks to discover. I, I just show you that now. You see, oh, that's obvious. This took me weeks to figure out. And that's fine. That was my worst bug ever. It caused the most outage for the most people. Second worst bug was on EverQuest, where I deleted every guild bank on a live push. Um, only the big important ones, because they're the ones that overflowed the buffer. We had to shut everything down and rewind everyone's clock on a global MMO by six hours. Oh, dear. So, yeah, exactly. Oh, dear. Um, 
the, the saying on the team was if you haven't at least broken boats, broken barge, and caused money loss, you couldn't be on the team. So, <laughs> yeah, we all did that. So that's the answer to your question. We're still getting used to it. And this is, is, is exactly overconfident. This is a little full penis sound of drum. Because I'm, I'm lazy. I should have called these two completely different things. I shouldn't have done this at all. All right, and there was a, I'm not showing you the whole spunk. There was a reason for this, okay? It's not as dumb as it looks. This is a sterile version, okay? But it broke down so fast. Any other questions? Yeah, we still have some minutes. Yeah. Now I have reactions, but you have a question. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry you get confused by that. Stop getting confused by that. Would be my main question. Um, what you want to do is make sure you write your for loops so that the variables are a little more verbose, perhaps, a little more obvious. I just use I, J, and K. That doesn't work for you. That's okay. That's not wrong to use longer variables. Second thing is you said that you put the wrong bracket in and it breaks. Great, it broke. You know what's wrong? That's okay. Um, putting in a uh, putting in a note on the for loop, like let's say uh, if I said for okay, sorry again, I'm doing this on the fly remotely, uh, and then I said this is something that's okay, All right? But if I were to do some some long note here and another one, and then another four, um, that becomes a little bit cumbersome to read for someone who's not used to it. Now, if you're the only one looking at your code, that's okay, but you're probably not. You're probably gonna have someone else gonna come after you to debug it. Um, if this note tells you something important, okay. Like I said, this is all right, I, I don't mind this. But I would say it's better to put the four loops in here and then maybe put some big note inside to say what it is you did and why you did it. Not huge, but you know, explain why you have the next four loops. If it's a problem in parsing your own code to make sure that you close the brackets correctly, I'm assuming a C like language, I don't know if you're using you know, like Python, <laughs> Python dash LB. Um, <laughs> you have nested loops in Python and you get to count white space. <laughs> um, but C sharp, uh, Java, JavaScript, C++, anything. Um, it, it's okay to put a note in here, but just, um, and, and when something goes wrong, the compiler tells you. So you got it wrong that time. I guarantee you, the more you do that, the better you get at it. That's really all I can tell you. Yeah. Four, four space and then not eight. Why, not what? Never what. And I've seen I++ implement I. I haven't seen it, but I've seen people who have. Um, I was going to talk about this called the one rule, and for me it's the one rule, and that is do everything only one time. And I found myself going on and on and on about defensive coding. I thought, i got to get to the actual debugging part. So I didn't include a bunch of stuff here that I was going to talk about. Um, the one rule is if you ever do something twice, make it a function. Never define something in two places. You know, how many doors do you have? That better be a comp file. Don't say, um, you know, for the number of corners in this box, which is always four, it's four, and you never do that. Always define something in one place. So when you change it, it changes everything. It's important. So for software engineering, I became, I switched from a programmer to software engineering, yeah. and they read a book called Software Engineering in the Landscape. <laughs> and their motto, they have an awesome picture at the beginning, that said, needlessly done this And you'll, you'll find, and it's insidious, because you'll write some stupid little function that does something, and you'll need that same functionality in two lines somewhere else, and you'll reproduce it. That's not always wrong, but you think, ah, it's not enough to make a function out of. Go ahead and make a function out of it. We 
it saves you time, it costs you almost nothing, almost nothing um, to put through. And it's like, you can probably make this inline it anyway, so don't worry about it. Just make it a function. Don't find things. And the reasons that I think is self evident is because when you find a bug in that line of code, just remember everybody uses it. You instruct the bug everywhere. Yeah, Programming over time is all about making stuff that really works eventually, because over time, if you don't see a bug over time long enough, you can finally feel that maybe that code is okay. Maybe the code is okay. But, it, but it, you push it down, push it down, and hopefully you push it down that you never think about it again. Yeah. So you name it right, push it down, and if you never have to revisit it, you won. That's any, a long term game. Any more questions? I thought you had your hand up. Sure, I know what you're asking. It sounds like when when do you think this approach is just wrong? Um, that's a feel thing for me. I'll be I'll figure out how to do something like think reflecting a projectile. I'll like oh, I'll do this and this and this. This is a me this is fine. This has got to be wrong. There's got to be a better way. And then I just do some Google and say who's done this before. Um, or it, it starts to feel messy, and you start to realize if I use uh, an example, if I use this approach, I'm going to have to change the function in eight places. But I can't think of any other way to do it. So I'm on place one, place two, place three. This is wrong. This is wrong. What what did I miss? Um, and go back and think about it again. I mean, I can't I, I can't give you one good answer for that. It's just a feel thing. The more you program, the more you get a feel for what's right and what's wrong. There's, there's a term that they call it proactive engagement as yeah. a programmer that you want to be. So if you feel yourself you're doing too much, you're overcomplicating anything, yeah, you want to give it a second thought and back up and go maybe. Um, I hate that feeling too. Because sometimes you're like, you know, and the next time I need to change this, I'm going to have to do this again. There's got to be a better way. And the bad truth is sometimes there isn't. But usually there is. What else? Yes. Awesome. I've got an answer and an anecdote. <laughs> Uh, and so, I don't know how Berlin else dealt with it, but I ended up doing exactly what you said not to do, making comments saying what obvious code is doing, because I was afraid of him looking at the code and assuming I didn't know what I was doing just because I didn't comment. In myself. charge of the Department of Dependency Department. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and part of me wonders if that's a, if that's a trait that's picked up along the way based on who you learn. Yeah, that's comments. an academic thing. That's things that professors think are good ideas that they've read in books, that if they ever actually went out and did that, they would be corrected. That's the nicest way I can put that. Uh, you're, what you're thinking is probably correct, that it was not the best practice, but it is trying to get you in the habit of commenting, and I can't say bad things about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. You get, you get to win the snark argument then. <laughs> yes. Oh, you came in late. That was the whole first half of the talk. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, and I, you missed my virus joke. Um, yes. So all the things that are taught in school that are wrong. Um, <laughs> um, right. There are a couple, and I think I could I, I could give a talk on that. Um, I'll, let me see if I come a couple top of my head. One is the comments thing. Um, professors tend to think the comments are very. Um, they tend to over comment. The code I see coming out of academia tends to be over commenting, when they should be doing what I showed originally, which is make your variable name the comment. Right. That sounds silly, but I showed an example of where that actually makes, makes sense. Um, second thing is I see uh, academics, and 
I have to be careful here. Um, they will tend to use the newest features that languages have. In the professional world, we don't do that because they haven't had time to anneal. Unless it's a really specific good feature that we really need. And I'm going to use the example of lambdas in C++. All right? It's a big pet peeve of mine. C++ spec makers kind of have other language envy, and they keep adding all those features into C++ like it's in work. No, you're right. That was the appropriate reaction right there. <laughs> um, it's not that they're bad. When they're used in small amounts, they're fine. But they tend to get overused and, all, and they're complicated. So uh, templates are probably a better example, but we've, we've kind, of, kind of come to Jesus about that one, so we're okay with it now. But it's a good idea in little bits and, and there, and I, I'll argue it's not a good idea, but I can accept the argument that it is. Um, they'll tend to spend a whole semester talking about them and how to code them and best practices and all the little nuances and how to get arguments into an abstract argument and turn them into code. Nobody uses them <laughs> because they're complicated and difficult to debug. And when you see code that uses it, particularly in libraries, you think, oh gosh, that's, I now have to go look up how these things work. You know, I, why can't you just give me a callback? That's what they're for. <laughs> um, other things are, um, they tend to emphasize form over function. Professional world, we like both. We'd rather have just a function. Um, I would rather your, your function, and, and I shouldn't use the word function that way, but I'd rather that the uh, module that you wrote has a couple of, maybe like a typo or something in it, you know, variables are misnamed, or it's not exactly correct, but works perfectly. The inputs produce the outputs they're supposed to. I, I'd rather have both, but if I had to pick one, I'll pick the functionality, whereas professors tend to emphasize the code format and the structure a bit more, um, so it has to look Correct. Even if you didn't get the right answer, hey, that's okay because this portion looked right. No, it's not. You had to get the right answer. <laughs> so um, that's off the top of my head. I think I need to talk about it. In general, listen to your professors if you really know what they're doing. They generally come from professional. It's very rare to get a professor who's, who's done nothing but teach. They generally have done some real world programming. Maybe they've forgotten. Maybe we should bring them back and beat them up a little bit. <laughs> but they do know what they're talking about in general. So I don't want to sit here and say, oh, well, we in the professional real world know all these different things and they don't know. That's not the case. Yeah. Um, Did I miss your anecdote? No, you got the anecdote. Okay. And then we moved on to the question. Sorry. But it's okay because it's a really easy question. Uh, I struggle with being concise a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll probably find out after we get into the question. Uh, so, with the different ways to do like screen sizes, sometimes people put uh, multiple programs on each side of their screen. Mm -hmm. like, what's a good metric for figuring out when they're? 152 characters. All right. Bet you weren't expecting something that specific. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know that off the top of my head because that's a width that I, I tend to use as an editor that I find works really well. 152 characters. Mm -hmm. Is there a zero? <laughs> he, he doesn't like comments. I love comments. I understand, and I understand why. And they're immediately wrong. They're not, you know, that's the problem. And, and I'm with him. Like the variable flow, like type code, occasionally put in a comment something tricky or why you had to right. do And that's what you should think when you see a comment there, something tricky here. Right. You shouldn't think, you're just about to explain to me what I just read. Right. Mm -hmm. If you read code, it's like going to a library. That's where you should go right now. You know, read the code for, for this code for programmers is like going to a library. Right. You don't sit there and parse it and think. I mean, you might be doing it when you're learning it, but once you start using it every day, it's no different than reading a book. I, I am out of time. Sorry if I was too boring. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I have, I think, a talk in half an hour, but I have nowhere else to be besides that. So if you want to come, just talk, that's fine. <laughs>